Welcome to Myth. As the lady was saying, welcome to Myth. Myth is an action adventure puzzle platform game. For the Commodore 64, in which you play this young man who's convinced that all the ancient myths are true. And of course, people around him are thinking that his imagination perhaps is a bit overactive. But lo and behold, it turns out that he is right. The myths are indeed true. And this ancient demon evil god thing has decided to change history in order to be able to conquer the future. So while he's asleep, the good titans, gods, whatever, visit our young friend and knowing that his faith and beliefs, or belief even, in the myth is his greatest strength, they send him back in time in order to set history straight. Which is why the game has the subtitle thing, whatever, history in the making. I will let the, the action speak for itself while talking a bit about the game uh, as a whole. I've always felt when it comes to games showcasing the Commodore 64, Myth is probably one of my top picks, I have to admit. At least from a technical point of view. The music by Maniacs of Noise, they, they, they just can't do wrong. Um, absolutely stellar music. The sound design is absolutely uh, of very, very high quality. And of course, the course even, uh, sorry, the graphical elements of this game are quite superior quality. The animation quality especially is very, very high. You have various different jumps and attacks. And in that regard, it feels a lot like Prince of Persia when it comes to jumping. The different types of jumps you can do are very, very similar to that game. And of course, you have various different attacks. You can fight unarmed, which I can't recommend. You can pick up fireballs, which are uh, one-shot kills for most normal enemies. And of course, the sword that you need to solve a puzzle is also a half decent weapon. You'll have to pick up various items in order to progress through the game and I was considering um, to get good at this game and actually perhaps even try to beat it. But after a while I gave up on that idea and uh, it is not because, I mean I'm not the best gamer in the world, I've never claimed to be that and I will never claim to be that either. But I'm definitely not one for giving up easily. I will happily play the same section of a game for hours on end on in order to perfect it. But in the case of this game, the things that prevented me from progressing were more design flaws than anything else. You can see this uh, young lady, we are supposed to uh, get an item from her by following her instructions. She wants us to come closer and then stop and then uh, that was the bad ending. Let's uh, show what's supposed to happen. When she waves you forward or lowers her hand, you can move towards her. And when she raises her hand to stop, you have to stop or signal for you to stop. Um, that's what's supposed to happen. If you follow her instructions, you get an extra energy dot thing. 
uh, to probably mention interface, top left, score, middle section, inventory, and right side, your energy, dots, plus your lives, right off the bat. Onwards, Achilles, everyone who knows their myths, should know that his weakness was his heal. So by stabbing his heal, he will drop his shield, which you will need in the next section. But as I was saying, the reason that I did not want to spend more time trying to get good at this game will become obvious after uh, this section. Achilles shield, we need to use that in order to deal with a certain enemy. A Medusa. So we need to deflect her evil eye beam, things, whatever, with the shield. And then we need to get close to her and use the sword to... Uh, ...cut off her head. The head is a weapon, and it's the only weapon that can defeat the end boss of this level. And a lovely blind jump, because blind jumps are fun. But what do we face towards the end of level 1? As we had a Hydra. So, while we uh, defeat that, I, I do want to emphasize that I perhaps sound a bit too critical towards this game. But it is more frustration, because the premise and promise is, is so high, good, whatever. And there's just these annoying niggly bits which makes it rather obnoxious. And uh, let me showcase one of them. On the first bit, you need a sword to cut down the skeleton. On the right hand side, the one that's tied to the chain. Top of the screen, you can't see it for the moment, but you'll see it shortly. In order to get the sword, you need to kill one of the skeletons, or kill skeletons until uh, one of them drops the sword, in order to chop down this poor guy. Fighting the skeletons hand to hand is uh, not a very positive prospect, and the ideal way to fight them is to kill one of those impish things, which are harpies, according to the game. Uh, what do I know? But anyway, the first harpy thing you kill will drop a firewall spell, and they can one-shot skeletons. But for some bizarre reason, the game just would not spawn one. So, out of frustration, I decided to start uh, punching Mr. Skelly Boy in hopes of him dropping a sword, but of course when I'm virtually dead, the imp thing spawns the uh, imp uh, harpy, and I died. And the harpy strikes again, because of course you need to hold the shield in order to deflect the evil eye beams, which means that you can't have a weapon equipped, because if you have a weapon equipped, you can't deflect the eye beams, and then you can't get rid of those harpy things, and this will happen. And it happened so many times, I just thought to hell with it, I'm not bothering. Don't get me wrong, it is a great game, and from a technical point of view, an absolute masterpiece on the Condor 64. But it was too frustrating to carry on. So, let us uh, switch to the Amiga version. And I will be playing the same length on the Amiga version, just to make it even.
Let's fire the play in deep. Let's do that. And welcome to the Amiga version of Myth. Made three years after the Commodore 64 version. Uh, if you use the Commodore 64 version as base, then this looks very, very different. The main character is very different from the original game. But gameplay wise, the sections are virtually identical. Some in, of the Commodore 64 version nickel bits has been corrected, but this game does not come without its own flaws. For some bizarre reason, I I don't, I don't know what to think about the Amiga version because you know what it's. The, the, the foundation of the game is exactly the same as the Commodore 64 version. The puzzles are the same, the way you deal with them are the same. And there's this more some presentation things like this demon being sent forth by undoubtedly the bad guy. Um, but the concept is the same, you still need the fireballs in order to defeat this demon so it drops its trident so you can get past the doggy. It's just, the fact that this game has score values popping up when you kill enemies or when you solve puzzles, it makes it very arcadey. And to be honest, I'm not necessarily sure that I feel that an arcade style game fits this game. If you're not aware of the Commodore 64 version, you wouldn't know better and you would not have the, the comparison to go by, but knowing the Commodore 64 version, which, as I said, the game is exactly the same by and large, it just, from a settings point of view, I think, even though it's the same setting, it perhaps sounds a bit weird, but I, I do prefer the Commodore 64 version. Would I, would I have preferred the Amiga version over the Commodore 64 if I'd seen the Amiga version first? I, I'm not sure. I don't think so. The thing is, I mean, if you like the one version from a gameplay perspective, there's a good chance that you will like the other version as well. Um, I mean, it's not, it's not bad. The Amiga version is definitely not bad. It's, it's, the overall quality is also very, very high, but it just, I think, if, knowing the Commodore 64 version, it feels very jarring, the differences there is between the two. But at the same time, it also reflects one of the things that I miss about the good, good old days. Same scenario, by the way, this one, of course, is voiced. Stop. Makes it a bit easier. Um, but back in the day, when you had an 8-bit version and a 60-bit version of different games, you could have the same game that played out in two different ways. So basically, if you had both systems, you could buy the same game on both systems and experience essentially two different games, even though it was the same game. Does that sound crazy that I kind of missed that? Maybe. Stop. By the way, I was just doing all for uh, stop stepping as much as it was, because it is super, super sensitive. If you don't stop it, it just stops. She will turn into a undead thingy and flame you to death. But anyway, as I was saying, a game like Batman the movie, the two versions, of the Commodore 64 and Amiga version, Foundation is the same, but they play very differently. And because both versions are very, very high quality, it means you can actually enjoy two versions of the same game that still plays and feels like two different games. Maybe I'm just, I don't know, maybe I'm just crazy. Mm. That is not entirely unlikely, but I do kind of miss the time where different systems meant a different versions. I suppose that you could always argue that not having the same version on 
There are different systems which make for some, I don't know, jarring experiences. People would expect to get a certain game and then it would be slightly different or play slightly different or whatever. But for the crap games, yeah, sure. But for the good games, having two different versions of the same game could be a very, very enjoyable. And yes, I own both Commodore 64 and Amiga versions of, of Batman. Amazing game. Coming towards the end of this level and the end of the video, in conclusion, I will say that if you take the time, you can probably get something out of myth. But as I was saying, the frustration points made me not want to spend the time with it. The Amiga version is somewhat easier uh, because it doesn't have a lot of the nickel bits that makes the Commodore 64 version frustrating. But I would still say I overall prefer the Commodore 64 version. And on that note, I'm going to say thanks for watching. Take care. See you next time. Bye bye for now.